Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tam, and this is Tutorials. It has been quite a while, hasn't it? Wow, well, well, I've been busy, but do not fear, I'm back with, hopefully, regular tutorials. Anyway, let's get into this. Now, quite a while ago, back in November of 2010, I released this tutorial about making a drop-down menu. And this was quite a while ago, quite early on in tutorials life. We've, we've, we've advanced since then. But, yeah, I was watching it. Well, I wasn't watching this. Actually, a friend of mine was watching this, and he said, hey, yeah, I watched your video. It was cool. It was really useful for me. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, yeah. Um, and it made me think, well, I made that so long ago, and CSS has come quite a long way since then, because we've got CSS free, we've got all these transitions and fancy stuff. And I thought, hmm, I should remake this tutorial and make it better. And this is something similar to what we ended up with last time. This is one I knocked together uh, for someone in the comments of the last video showing them how to center their menu. But this is what we'll be creating in this tutorial. It may not look as brightly colored, it's a bit, bit darker, but you know, it looks nicer. So we've got a nice little fade. You might not be able to see it in the video, but the text is actually fading between colors. And then we've got our drop downs. And you can see the home and link to here are active, have the active class. So we know they're the active page. Although there can't really be two active pages at once, but there's just for examples in both. And then we've got also portfolio people action shards. That's a yeah. And I've actually written in the little uh, rack row, sort of double pointy arrows here. And you don't have to do that. But that was just for me, so I knew which <laughs> where the drop downs were. It's quite nice. Or you can just do a class and maybe have a little picture. But anyway, I digress. This menu is completely pure HTML and CSS free, which means there's no JavaScript for the animations, uh, there are no pictures, everything is CSS. Now, before I start, I must point out, this is CSS free, it's not 100% perfect. There are some uh, browser bugs that uh, you might not be able to see here, but you can actually see part of the menu. Um, hasn't quite disappeared it's just there in the background it's it's not perfect but it's pretty damn good nonetheless um, if you were to do it with JavaScript it'll probably work I'll, it would look like completely perfect but this is all about the CSS so let's get straight into it let's uh, get back and here we are in our lovely code so First thing we're going to do is wrap everything we want to write in a div, which will allow us, uh, as you saw back here on the example page, the whole thing was centered in the middle of the page. So to do that, we're going to create a div and we shall call it container. And I am, as I was in that tutorial many years ago, using Zen coding, although I've actually got an old version. It's now called Emmet. Uh, if you want to find it, just Google Emmet or Emmet code, and you should come across it. Anyway, let's get into this. So, first thing we're going to do is lay out the very basics. So, we've got our div container. We also want to have nav, uh, which will hold our navigation, and we're going to have another div, and we shall call it content. Yay. And inside we're just going to have a paragraph saying, hello, world, oh my god, yeah, okay, excellent. So, inside our navigation, we are going to have our menu, and our menu is essentially lots of lists nested in other lists. So, to give you a quick example, if I create a simple menu here using Zen coding, let's say it's got five menu items, and each one has an anchor tag with a link to nothing. So we've got home, uh, folio, uh, what else? Contact, links, oh, and a boot. 
So we've got our basic menu and it doesn't look very nice. We've got our stuff there. It looks kind of crappy and we haven't got any drop menus, drop down menus either. So let's add a drop down menu and to do that, before I rush ahead of myself, you come to after the anchor tag, but before after the closing anchor tag, but before the closing list item tag, and we create a completely new menu. So let's do three. Add some anchor tags. Whoops. Set the href ref to hashtag, which is nothing. And we can add blah blah blah, blah whatever we want inside here to save time. Oops. I am actually going to go into example and I'm going to copy and paste <laughs> a little something I made earlier. So let's paste that in there and let me quickly talk you through what we've got here. We have our main list item, uh, unordered list tags and inside there we've got five list items. One, two, three, four and five. There. And inside these list items, in some of them, like the portfolio list item, we have a unordered list with some more list items. And within one of those list items, we've got another unordered list and so on and so forth. So we've got about four nested, three or four uh, nested unordered lists, which will then create our sub menus, our lovely little drop downs. And we've got links here. And you see this link has a class of active and so does this link, but we'll come on to that later. That's all to do with the CSS. This is all the code we need, pretty much. So let's refresh the page, and oh my god, that looks terrible. What is there to do? Well, we'll do all the CSS. So I'm going to create a new file and call it style.css. And before we do anything else, we need to link that file in our um, main HTML document and to do that you just do link rel style sheet and a href to the style sheet which is style yeah dot css okay excellent now let's get styling the rest of the complete rest and everything else to do with this tutorial is done in our lovely style sheet so the first thing we are going to do is we're going to import a font style sheet from Google Web Fonts and it's actually the Lato font which is this really nice font and I just want to use it because it looks nice. It's a lot better than some of the default fonts you get and it's completely free to use. And Google Web Fonts are great if you go google.com slash web points. Fonts? You want some web points? Web Fonts you will find lots of them and they're all free to use and there's, they're really easy if you just hit quick use. You can see all the different types of importing to your website and how to actually integrate it in your CSS. So we're just going to do that now. Okay, what we're going to do is at import and then get our URL, which in this case is http slash slash fonts dot google apis can't write properly <laughs> dot com slash CSS and then it's using PHP but that's not important. Family equals Lato. Cool, and we're done. Now then, let's do the actual <laughs> CSS coding and stuff, important stuff. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of all the padding and all the margins. This is a very simple uh, reset of our code. There are a lot, lot better ones if we go to CS, cssreset.com, there we go. Load you bastard. There we go. Wait, this isn't it. CSS reset. There we go. There's no dash. You can see we've got a lot of the decent um, full resets, which are really good if you're making an actual site. But we're not. We are just making a simple drop down menu. So if we refresh, you can see that all the margins and padding which we had, which were indenting our list, are now gone which is exactly what we want. And we're also going to do some of the other coding. So let's get out of the way our container uh, code to center off our content and our content code just to make that look good. So container, we're going to give it a width of 960 pixels and a margin of auto. 
So that will now center everything contained inside our container within the center of our page in a 960 pixel wide area. Now you'll notice that our list items are still showing, although they're actually outside. If I inspect, you can see that they are outside of our container there. The orange bits showing us where the margin is, the light blue showing us where the actual container is. And we'll get rid of those very shortly. But first, let's finish off coding our um, throwaway stuff, our content down here. So we do hashtag content and we'll give it a width of 100%. Just to be sure, you don't really need to do this, but I'm just doing it anyway, and a height of 300. This will be important later on, but for the time being, we're just going to do that. And we'll also make it look a bit nicer with the content paragraphs and give it a bit of padding, so five pixels. Good. Okay. So now we've got all that out of the way, let's work on our actual menu. So, Kikoki, let's comment out this bit. So, main menu. Excellent. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to style our navigation um, div to give it a nice little background and make it look all good and give us a lot of spacing. If I, if I go men, menu example, we are going to style our um, navigation. So we've got this padding at the top here and we've got in fact, no, that's it for the navigation, sorry. Just the little space at the top there. So let's do that now, let's type nav. Now, oh, what you would normally do is if you're wrapping your navigation lists um, in your nav tag, which is good for uh, search engine optimization, you would have multiple ones. So you'd have your main navigation at the top of the page and maybe a little sub navigation at the bottom of the page in your footer. So you would have to give these different IDs because you would style them differently. In this case, we're just doing one menu, so we'll leave it without an ID. Okay, so nav, and we get a margin on the top of 10 pixels. Beautiful. Next, we want to add our background and get rid of all these list items, these little bullets next to our list. So to do that, we're going to go nav and we're going to get our unordered lists and set list style to none. Next, we're going to add our background, which will be a color. In this case, it is 2C3E50. And if we refresh, oh, if we save first, that's always a good idea. If we refresh, you can see <gasps> list times are gone and we've got a background color. Excellent. And we're also going to add a little bit of CSS3 here now and give it a border radius of five pixels. And we'll add some padding on either side of naught. So we've got top and down, top and bottom, sorry, will be naught, so no padding. And left and right will have five pixels of padding, just like that. So as you can see, it's slightly curved and our list has padding and you can see the sub lists also have padding and they actually also have backgrounds as well but we can't see it obviously because the background color is exactly the same okay next we are going to add something which will be very useful when we are floating our sub lists now if i don't do this it will look very strange in fact i'll tell you what for the time being i'll just add some slashes here oops to remind us that something needs to go here later on. And I'll come back to that later. So first off, we are going to float our uh, list items. So if we go nav, ul, li to get our list items, we're going to float them left. And by doing so, what? Oh, our background's gone. Oh, everything's all messed up and our Hello and world, our content is halfway in the menu. This is terrible. So we're going to go back here <laughs> where we were just a second ago and do something very special. We are going to clear fix our navigation. And we can do that without adding any extra divs or anything like that, or setting the overflow to hidden. So then we won't be able to see our drop down menus. And so, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go nav ul, and then after, which is a CSS prefix, 
we're going to go after. So we're going to add something after our list, but not actually add it in in our HTML code. We're going to add a nothing. Basically, we're going to add a sort of null object, which will give it a content of a simple full stop, just so it has some content, so it's got something to manipulate. And we set clear to both. Now you may um, have looked into clear fixes before, where they told you add an extra little div or something after your content and give it a clear of both, which would then clear the floated divs above it. We're doing the exact same thing, but without adding the extra div, we're letting the CSS do it all for us. So we're going to set the visibility to hidden, so we can't actually see the div. Uh, we'll set display to block and set its height to zero just so it will not affect our um, styling in any way it simply allows us to clear fix our content so now if we refresh you can see our backgrounds back and it is clear fixing and our oops our um, content is floated at the bottom well not floated at the bottom is pushed down to the bottom by our floated navigation items which is what we want okay next I'm just going to set position to relative and line height Oh, not line break, line height to 20 pixels, which will help us with um, styling later. And you can see it gives it a nice bit of spacing. You might not notice that, but it looks it looks good. And one thing that is glaringly obvious, 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 sorry, is that we still have our sub menus. Let's, can we get rid of? No, we can't change the color. God damn, default internet the coloring. Blah, it's all nasty and horrid. Anyway. We can still see our submenus. So first thing I want to do is completely get rid of those submenus. So I'm going to comment out a new section and call it sub menu. Comments are very useful for organizing your code, so I highly recommend you do it um, in your own code, just so if you ever need to look back over your code, you don't have to trawl through all this craziness to find what you're looking for. OK, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go nav, another list, list item, and then get the unordered lists of that list item so the child unordered list unordered lists of the list item and just set display to none for the time being and if we refresh the page there we go we've only got our main list items visible or in this case very barely visible because of the flipping coloring we'll do something about that now so we're going to go nav oh, unordered list list item and our anchor tags next we're going to display as them as blocks so we can manipulate them properly and we'll actually set their color to white so if we refresh there we go we can actually see the links oh and that's something i actually forgot to do up here uh we're gonna set the font because that's times new roman which isn't the nicest looking font in the world for our website so font family and um, we want to use our imported font so we want to use lato and we'll let it fall back to helvetica Arial and then sans serif. So we're going from really good looking to good looking to all right looking to there, but still not terrible looking. And we actually want to change the font, default font size to 14 pixels. It's usually 16, but we want it slightly smaller uh, just because it looks nicer. Okay, so we've got our font there and the font size, which is good. Back to styling our anchor tags. So we also want to get rid of the text decoration, set that to none, so we no longer have our underline, which is good. And we're going to give it a bit of padding. So we'll do uh, 14 pixels, 15 pixels, and 15 pixels. So I believe, if I'm right, we've got top, left, and bottom padded, but not right padded. Or maybe we've got top and bottom and the front. I'm not very good at remembering the order of these but I worked it out earlier and it seems to work. If you want you can actually look up um, all the things for padding and margin. So that's left right top bottom and left and right all contained in two different variables. Anyway we're also going to set the font size of these main menu items to 18 pixels and if we refresh there we go we've got a good looking menu already. But we have no hover states, we have no drop down menus. We better get onto that. So, first things first, let's do the hover states quickly. So, we do nav, unordered list, list item, and on the hover of the list item, we set the first child of that list item, the first anchor tag child, so not any of the other um, anchor tags in the sub lists, but the first 
child anchor tag of that list item and we'll set the color to uh, 3, 4, 9, 8, D, B V not V, there we go no, V not V blah, blah, blah. excellent and we'll actually copy and paste this and we'll set our active um, anchor tag. So this is useful for when uh, you're on a page, you want to know what page you're on, you look at the menu and usually one of them has a different style to the rest of them so you know you're on that page. And we're just going to use our active class to let us know that we're on that page. And we're going to change the color just slightly so the colors between the hover events and the active events are a bit different. So we've got 2980B9 and there we go. So now if I refresh, you can see our active link has a slightly dark blue and when we hover it over, over the other items, we get a slightly lighter blue. Now if you remember over here in our example, they faded, they looked really nice, they faded slightly. So we're going to add our first ever CSS free transition on our menu items. And to do that, at the moment I'm working in Chrome and I'm only writing in Chrome. But if you come to an excellent website called CSS free generator, it's got all these awesome examples of um, CSS. So if we go down to transitions, um, let's say we want to transition everything and we want it to give it a 0.3 uh, second duration. And we can change the easing. You see we have all the different browsers. So we've got uh, WebKit based browsers like Chrome and Safari. We've got Mozilla browsers like Firefox. We've got Microsoft um, browsers for like IE9. And we've got Opera there as well. and Transition is the um, semantic uh, version of it. Unfortunately, almost no browsers use the semantic versions yet. They all have their annoying own little appendices at the beginning to be able to tell the browser whether it works or not, which is unfortunate. But hopefully in the future, all browsers will get together and understand that we all just want to write one bit of code to do one thing, not five bits of code for all the different browsers. Anyway, so in the meantime, I'm just going to be writing for WebKit. So if you do WebKit transition, and we'll set it to 0.3 seconds and give it an easing of ease out. So if we refresh now, oh, that's the example. If we refresh on our actual one, you can see when we hover over it, they have a transition. Now that transition is really slow, so I think I'm going to speed it up to 0.25 seconds there we go that's a bit better so you can see we've got a nice little transition going on there and hover over excellent now let's get cracking on our sub menus